Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be going over how to make a complete setup for your baby crested gecko. This is going to be any baby crested gecko that you do purchase from me or perhaps another breeder intact. Uh, these are going to be some things that we're going to be talking about on how to properly set up the right crested gecko enclosure and just some things that the newcomers when buying their crested geckos kind of do wrong. So with all that being said, I guess it's time to sit back, relax, dive into some crested gecko setups and... Roll the intro! First, of course, we got to define what a baby crested gecko is. Now, when I'm talking about baby crested geckos, I'm referring to, you know, let's get a little closer because we're talking about this little dude right here. This is one of our babies that we hatched out in late 2020. He's roughly around three. Oh. <laughs> It's roughly around 3.2 grams. Of course, without the tail, he literally dropped the tail right out of the egg. I tried to catch him and put him in an enclosure and he dropped and immediately ran. So little tailless wonder right here, little frog butt coming in at 3.2. This is gonna be the type of setup we're gonna be talking about for a gecko like this. In all honesty, this setup will work for any gecko that's anywhere around from three grams to somewhere around the 10 areas when you're gonna wanna upgrade from the setup we're gonna be talking about today. First, let's go over the enclosure size. Now, personally for us here at DBCBXX, we like using these shoebox bins. These are, I believe, six quart bins. Uh, yep, six quart Sterilite bins. They're 13 inches long by eight inches wide by about five inches tall. I find these to be perfect for little geckos just because they have a space where they can explore a little bit, but however, it's still nice and small enough for them to feel secure and not be overwhelmed. Not only that, but also the fact is that they're able to easily find their food. Now, I believe this is the biggest misconception when it comes to the new owners of crested geckos, especially the babies. They try to put them in these massive enclosures, anything from like 10 to 20 to the 18 by 18 by 24, 12 by 12 by 18, just starting out. Now again, we're talking about a gecko that is only around this big. This gecko is going to be way too small to go in an enclosure like that. It's going to become overwhelmed. It's not going to be able to find its food easily. And all in all, it's just not going to have a good time and thrive in a setup like that. Now that's not to say those enclosures are bad. Those would be excellent for a sub adult to adult crested gecko. However, when we are talking about the little babies you're getting, again, three to five grams when they're coming out, usually from the first from the breeder, you're gonna want something like this. Now this is a very cheap and easy setup to use. I believe you can get these bins for like $4. The, the, some of the stuff we're gonna be used to be altering it, making sure that it's good for a crested gecko. Honestly, it's less than 20 bucks. And having an enclosure like this for only $20 until your crested gecko gets to that sub adult size so it can go in the enclosure really is paired for the longevity of the gecko. Now that we have our proper enclosure size, before we even think about putting some stuff in here, we're gonna need to add some ventilation. Of course, just housing a shoebox bin for a crested gecko isn't gonna work. There's not gonna be enough ventilation for them and they're not gonna have a good time. Now, I've done ventilation for a couple of crested geckos in a couple different ways. However, I find that just drill slotting holes just with a nice, just a uh, standard drill. It's my, uh, my timer, my pizza's ready. I'm gonna have to, to, to wrap it. We're, we're gonna take a quick intermission. <laughs> Good pizza. Uh, anyway, back to the back to the content. Anyway, yeah, just getting your basic drill, drilling some holes. I do, I don't know, I think this is 10. I just go boom, boom, boom. Just make a little entryway to it. I've tried a couple of other ways. Of course, just cutting a square and then applying some sort of plastic screening. I usually use window screening and then tape it. However, over time, I found that the tape really adheres off or anything like um, a hot glue gun or even silicone. I find it kind of strips away from it and the animal actually ends up escaping. It's happened to me twice. At that point, I stopped doing the screen and I went with this drill slotted method and it's been working great ever since. Now that we have a nice ventilated enclosure, it's time for the next step, which is of course going to be what to put the enclosure, or what the su substrate. It's gonna be substrate. <laughs> now personally, when it comes to substrate for the Crested Gecko, I opt for paper towels. Now this is just a personal preference for me, just for the fact that while my babies are growing from hatching out of the egg for day one till the, whatever the gram ratio is to where I feel comfortable selling them, uh, I wanna make sure that they're having healthy bowel movements and eating properly, making sure they're not getting any substrate in their mouth. I'm able to track, track the uh, bowel movements, the poops a little bit easier. It's really easy to see poops in a nice white paper towel versus something like cocoa fiber or anything like that. Uh, all in all, just makes my job 
job a little bit easier. However, once I feel comfortable enough to where the gecko's growing a little bit, it's not dropping any weight, it's constantly gaining weight, those poops look good, nothing seems wrong, I do actually switch them over into some sort of soil substrate, whether that be uh, cocoa blocks, uh, topsoil, anything like that to where they're nice, the humidity is a little bit easier to achieve, and you're not constantly having to switch out the paper towels every couple of days because, let's be honest, crested geckos always slip their food dish and it just goes all over the paper towels and makes it smell bad. So it seems like with paper towels, I'm switching this stuff like every two to three days. So we got our enclosure, we got the proper ventilation, we got our nice little substrate in there, whether that be cocoa block, topsoil, or this nice little paper towel that I just put in there. It's for our next step and really the final step, putting some decorations in here. Now, the decorations are real easy. Honestly, I just put single plants, uh, anything like these little aquatic plants. You can get these for a couple bucks at your pet store. Uh, some of the Exoterran Zoomed ones, some of the little climbing ones you see, I just, the small ones, I plop right in there and it's pretty easy. You just take this, wrap it up, and now your gecko not only has a nice little hiding spots in here where he's able to dig around, climb, and still feel safe with all this foliage, but this is actually gonna collect water to help your gecko drink as well. Not only that, but it's gonna help keep the condensation in here instead of just the water being sprayed on the walls, it's gonna be sprayed on these leaves too, making sure that when that evaporates, it contains more humidity, and the humidity levels are gonna stay consistent for a longer period of time. Well, it's it's really just that easy. Paper towels, a little plant, and then the ventilation, and boom, you, boom. You got yourself a nice little crested gecko bin for them to grow out of, and then once they are at that appropriate age where they're gonna outgrow that enclosure, you can put them into something a little bit more permanent, a little more bigger, and something that looks just a little bit nicer. Now, if you're hell-bent on not using a tub or a little bin, and you're just absolutely against using bins for some reason, I don't know, you wanna waste some money on a temporary setup to then move it into a other setup, hey, that's, that's on you, that's not me, I get it, I get it, man. Uh, there are some different alternatives, while costing a lot more can be used. Um, anything like the uh, small, I believe it's the 8 inch by 8 inch by 12 inch Exoterras. Uh, that could work for a baby crested gecko or somewhere around a 2.5 to 5 gallon aquarium can be used for these temporary enclosures. Uh, however, like I stated before, I really don't recommend using anything bigger than that. These 12 by 12 by 18s to the 18 by 18 by 24s, the uh, equivalent to your aquarium setup or aquarium size. It's just not good for the baby gecko. It's a too small to be put in there. In order to make it work, you're going to have to cram a bunch of foliage, a bunch of hides, a bunch of plants, utilizing multiple feeding dishes at a time so your gecko knows where to get the food and it doesn't have to venture this long distance to get it. Uh, all in all, it's just it's more of a pain in the butt, man. Like I said, under 20 bucks, you can get this and you're good to go until the gecko's old enough, about probably a couple months to half a year, maybe a little bit longer. It, you know, ge geckos uh, grow at different sizes, different varieties of sizes and boom then you can put them in there so it's up to you i'm not telling you how to do things i'm just showing you a way that is a lot easier well, that is going to wrap it up for today folks and as always huge shout out to zen habitats if you're unfamiliar with zen habitats they make incredible enclosures like this one right here wow something like a two foot by two foot for one of my adult crested geckos that would make me a happy guy as a breeder that would make the gecko a happy gecko as a gecko, that would make you a happy person as the owner, because you get a look at a really cool enclosure, the gecko's happy, I'm happy, you're, everyone's happy, it's a win-win-win. You can find out some more information about Zen Habits or potentially purchase an enclosure right down there in the description below. And other than that, of course, we got all the other good stuff down there in that description, including the Facebook, the Instagram, the TikTok, the merch people, we got t-shirts, and we also have Patreon, patreon.com slash dbcbexotics. You get the up-to-date update on everything that's going on within my business. This includes the back the up-to-date updates on everything behind the scenes, including our Aki monitors, Argus monitors, Toke geckos, New Caledonian geckos, ball pythons. I know, I'm breeding, breeding ball pythons. That's never been done before. It is really, I am a pioneer of the ball python trade. <laughs> Um, if you guys want to learn, check that out. It starts as low as $1 a month. It's really cool. Your name also gets to be in the outro, the outro that we are going to roll right now.